Hello, welcome. In this video, we want to look at the semi-synthetic penicillins, right? That is our target. So first of all, let's take a recap where we are currently. We started off with beta-lactam antibiotics chapter. In this, we saw that they have a beta-lactam ring, correct? Now, they can be penicillins, cephalosporins, monobactams or carbapenems. Okay, I would like to always go with the spelling because we have to write the exam, right? Carbapenems, okay. Then in penicillins, we started off with penicillins. We looked only at penicillin G in the previous video, correct? That is benzyl penicillin. Actually, for penicillin G, G, you can say gold standard, exact uh, expansion, not there. So the first antibiotic was discovered by Sir Alexander Fleming. This person, he got a Nobel Prize for it. It was an accidental discovery. It is, uh, the penicillin comes from the fungus, penicillium notatum. Okay, it is from the fungus, penicillium notatum. But nowadays, they are making... Uh, a penicillins from penicillin cris what is that word here from chrysogenum okay <clears throat> so all of these have beta lactam ring that you already know right they have beta lactam ring they are how do they work they actually act against the cell wall they inhibit the cell wall synthesis basically you can see here na g and na m are there g m g m like that now all the these are interlinked, correct? NAMs. NAMs are interlinked. NAMs, that is N-acetylmuramic acids are interlinked with these pentaglycine crosslink, which will be broken by the penicillin. So, penicillin will not allow this kind of strong structure. So, because of uh, weak cell wall, the bacteria will die. So, it is bactericidal. Now, coming to penicillin, it is a narrow spectrum. It is active mostly against gram-positive bacteria because the gram-positive bacteria cell wall only will have all these uh, layers, uh, thick, thick layers, peptidoglycan, etc. Now, what are the gram-positive bacteria you know? In the cosci, you have streptococcus, staphylococcus, pneumococcus. In bacilli, you have bacillus anthracis, uh, corvinibacterium diphtheriae, clostridia, etc. So, this much you can remember, correct? Now, mechanism of resistance, some of these bacteria, they have learnt of some resistance against penicillin. So what they will make, oh, they will make penicillinases. They will make these beta lactamases which will cut the beta lactam ring in the penicillin. So penicillin can't act. So they also have reduced affinity protein, um, that is a penicillin binding protein, right? The penicillin binding protein reduced affinity to all these penicillins. <clears throat> then decreased drug penetration in gram negative. Gram negative, no, they will not even allow the drug to penetrate. So these are the ways of resistance. Then how is it given? It is actually given IV. There was a photo for that, right? Hold on. <coughs> so here you can see. These are usually given IV. IM actually is quite painful. So IV. They won't give it orally because orally it is destroyed by gastric acid. Okay. Then coming to depot preparations. So there are some depot preparations which can prolong their action. You have procaine. Penicillin G, benzathione, penicillin G. These are less water soluble. This procaine and benzathione are less water soluble. Okay. Then coming to uses now. Uses, uh, main uses you should remember against uh, syphilis. It is drug of choice, penicillin G. Because uh, you have already seen here, Tryponema pallidum is the organism. So it is again active against this. So it is the drug of choice. Syphilis you should write in the exam. Leptospirosis also you write. Okay, these are the uses. Now let's move on to adverse drug reactions. So adverse drug reactions of um, penicillin, it, it causes hypersensitivity, sensitivity, sensitivity. Oh, is this correct spelling now? Hypersensitivity reaction. Okay, so it is uh, basically there can be anaphylactic shock. So you always should give an intradermal test okay of a small dose before giving penicillin g but though intradermal test can be negative this person can have an anaphylactic reaction so you should be careful okay so uh, if there is anaphylactic shock immediately you should give adrenaline that is 0.3 to 0.5 ml um, of 1 is to 1000 solution im okay you should give im in adrenaline is given im now corticosteroids and diphenhydramine also can be given because diphenhydramine is a antihistamine. So all this you can give for treatment of the anaphylactic shock caused by penicillin. 
so everybody understood uh, penicillin we kind of reviewed the whole thing right now let's move on to semi synthetic penicillins so semi synthetic penicillins basically they want to overcome the problems which normal this penicillin g had so basically it was remember you can't give it orally right so it because gastric acid used to destroy it so now you have a acid resistant alternative then penicillinases uh, so many penicillinases were able to destroy the <coughs> penicillin so now you have some penicillin penicillinase resistant penicillins basically these you know they have some side chains which will protect the ring okay so these will have some side chains that protect the ring then extended spectrum penicillin so that was active mainly against gram positive so in extended spectrum penicillins you have act them they will act against gram negative also like e coli proteus klebsiella shigella salmonella etc okay in extended spectrum penicillins you have amino penicillins then you have carboxy penicillins and uraido penicillins so you should know three groups are there in extended penicillins amino penicillins carboxy penicillins and uraido penicillins okay so let us uh, look at the examples now first of all let us look at acid resistant alternative okay now acid resistant alternative you have phenoxy methyl penicillin see look at this diagram here phenoxy methyl penicillin phenoxy methyl penicillin tablets okay so acid resistant right so you can give them orally correct so it is tablet so phenoxy methyl penicillin also called as penicillin v according to internet v means uh, ves something ves co or something which means oral okay so penicillin v the root right this vesco and all that's not important just for your information that is okay what is penicillin v if you want to know now uh, this uh, phenoxy methyl penicillin what you saw now the tablets you can give it to treat pharyngitis sinusitis otitis media uh, less serious pneumococcal infection so can you remember any one of this at least pharyngitis can you remember so it is used to treat pharyngitis okay now let us move on to penicillinase resistant penicillins okay are you awake is it entering your head we finished the acid resistant now we are going to pen penicillinase resistant penicillins okay now these have side chains that will protect that beta lactam ring that beta lactam ring you have already seen right in the structure this beta lactam ring will be protected by a side chain so what are the drugs so uh, the drugs are methicillin cloxacillin and dicloxacillin okay are you able to see so the drugs are methicillin cloxacillin and dicloxacillin this methicillin is not used much okay not at all used cloxacillin and dicloxacillin you can see here uh, both similarly cloxacillin c tablets and iv both are available okay so let's move on we don't want to spend much time on this <clears throat> this penicillinase resistant penicillins you know they can still be destroyed by gram negative bacteria gram negative bacteria what enzymes they produce against that it cannot protect itself okay so whatever is important that you should know let's make that big okay then coming to extended uh, spectrum penicillins extended spectrum penicillins you have amino penicillins like ampicillin amoxicillin these two names you should know then carboxy penicillins that we are not studying because it's not actually used urido penicillins you have piperacillin piperacillin is actually used so you need to know piperacillin okay so look at all this now extended spectrum penicillins look at uh, extended spectrum penicillin what you have amino penicillins so you have uh, this one is ampicillin tablet injection and then you have amoxicillin that is also an amino penicillin extended spectrum penicillin see this amoxicillin right usually you can give it as amox you will get it as mox right or you can give it as uh, in combination with clavulanic acid that time it will be more powerful okay then let us look at the uses of ampicillin see ampicillin is um, given in especially meningitis you should not forget meningitis empirical therapy along with third generation cephalosporins that means 
meningitis is kind of an emergency you cannot wait for any culture report etc so you will give empirical therapy that is without knowing if the organism is sensitive you will give sorry yeah you, you will give so you will combine it with third generation cephalosporins and give ampicillin okay that's an important use uti you will use only if it is sensitive so you should have the culture report cholecystitis sabe that is subacute bacterial endocarditis in this case you can use it along with probenecid probenecid increases the and levels of these beta lactam uh, anti antibiotics so with probenecid they will give for subacute bacterial endocarditis septicemia you can treat acute necrotizing ulcerative gingivitis you can use okay so these are the uses of ampicillin amoxicillin similar to ampicillin just remember that amoxicillin is uh, uh, it will cause less uh, diarrhea because it is fully absorbed and it the food does not interfere with its absorption and amoxicillin will not interfere in uh, oral contraceptive so amoxicillin is actually used a lot but amoxicillin is actually not that uh, effective against the bacteria like uh, ampicillin okay ampicillin is effective against shigella etc just note that um, amino penicillins are active against h pylori also h pylori is what gram negative only right yes it is gram negative okay so what else you need to know here amoxicillin <clears throat> and ampicillin differences you should know we'll come to that then carboxy penicillins you have carbamicillin okay carboxy penicillins not much use so i really don't want to cover that urido penicillins you have piperacillin piperacillin uh, is there here piperacillin is given iv okay then you have all these uh, beta lactamase inhibitors like clavulanic acid which is given along with amoxicillin and uh, sub sub sulbactam then tazobactam are you able to see so lot of uh, beta lactamase inhibitors are there these are not actually concerned with uh, this is not in this classification hold on so you should know about beta lactamase inhibitors these so beta lactamase inhibitors uh, so like clavulanic acid uh, which is given with amoxicillin sulbactam tazobactam which is given with piperacillin these will sacrifice themselves and the bacteria whatever enzymes they make now they will go and concentrate on clavulanic acid and it will be cutting cutting clavulanic acid that uh, the amoxicillin that is the drug antibiotic will go and kill the bacteria so it is a nice way of see look at this first amoxicillin is given with clavulanic acid and piperacillin is given with tazobactam this is what we have seen okay maybe other combinations are also there these are the important ones you can know okay look at this uh, this one ampicillin see ampicillin usually it is given with sulbactam okay look at this ampicillin with uh, sulbactam okay so let's add that information here sulbactam usually with ampicillin okay so shall we wind up this video in the next video we will discuss uh, cephalos cephalo okay we have to do this also hold on ampicillin amoxi amox amoxicillin ampicillin amoxicillin differences you look at absorption ampicillin is incomplete absorbed so it alters the intestinal flora so it will cause diarrhea very commonly it will cause diarrhea supra infection it will cause okay amoxicillin complete absorption so it will not stay in the lumen it will uh, it will cause less diarrhea interactions with oral contraceptive pills <clears throat> this ampicillin interacts and amoxicillin is good that way also it does not reduce effectiveness of oral contraceptive pills effect ampicillin is actually effective against shigella and haemophilus influenza it is uh, more active but amoxicillin is less active okay but it has other good things the dose the dose uh, ampicillin is given four times a day amoxicillin given thrice a day that's all you have to know 250 to 500 mg four times a day see here ampicillin 500 mg and amoxicillin also 500 mg only is recommended right so these are the differences next video we will look at uh, cephalosporins okay come back for the next video bye bye 
Guys, just one more point, okay, before we wind off. Just note here, gonorrhea, okay, for gonorrhea caused by Neisseria gonorrhea, right? Uh, you can give ampicillin, okay, uh, which type of gonorrhea, gonorrhea is non-penicillinase producing gonococcus. For non-penicillinase producing gonococcus, you can give with, um, uh, you can give ampicillin and you should, if you give it with probenicid now, that time the effect of ampicillin will become more because this probenicid will compete with uh, ampicillin for excretion in urine. So ampicillin will stay for a longer duration, its uh, plasma concentration will be more. So ampicillin will work better in uh, gonorrhea, okay gonorrhea. Is this clear guys? So you should write this point also, gonorrhea also you can use ampicillin, okay. Amoxicillin, ampicillin, they will ask together if they ask in the exam. Fine then, what else you want to know for now? That's all, let's meet in the next video, bye bye.